let us discuss about the histology of female reproductive system the female reproductive system it consists of a pair of ovaries a pair of fallopian tubes and a single uterus along with cervix and vagina ovaries we are having uh, two ovaries and they lie on both the sides of the uterus and uh, each ovary it measures about 3 into 1.5 into 1 cm that is it is 3 cm in length 1.5 cm in width and 1 cm thick these are female gonads that produce ova and hormones that like estrogen and the progesterone they are almond shaped and uh, they lie in the or they are attached to the back of the broad ligament by a fold of the peritoneum called the meso ovarian the surface of the ovaries it is covered by a single layer of simple cuboidal epithelium and we call it as a germinal epithelium uh, which is a misnomer as it does not give rise to the germ cells so this surface epithelium it is continuous with the mesothelium of the peritoneum so underneath the germinal epithelium we are having a layer of dense connective tissue and we call it as a tunica albuginea so as a whole in a cut section if we see we see that uh, we divide it into a peripheral cortex and the inner medulla area medullary area and the boundary between the two that is the cortex and medulla it is indistinct and medulla it is uh, continuous with that of the hilum so if we talk about central medulla it is uh, made up of loose fibro elastic connective tissue which consists of blood vessels lymphatics and the nerves and it is uh, continuous with the meso ovarium at the hilum uh, here the cells that uh, that is the hilar cells are present uh, which are having the characteristic uh, similarity to the interstitial cells of the leading and these cells are supposed to be or thought to be produce uh, androgens that is they are the source of androgens from the ovary so if we talk about the outer cortex or the peripheral cortical area uh, it forms the maximum part of the ovary it contains the ovarian follicles uh, as you can see in different stages of maturation and degeneration and it also consists of corpus luteum and the corpus albicans uh, these follicles they are embedded in a highly cellular connective tissue stroma mainly made up of large spindle shaped fibroblast cells and in each menstrual cycle a group of ovarian follicles they start maturing under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone but only one uh, attains full maturity while others they degenerate that is the atritic follicles are uh, can be seen at various stages of the growth in the cortex so if we start with the follicles that is the development of the ovarian follicles so to start with we are having the smallest one that is the primordial follicles which are the simplest in form and structure and located in the periphery of the cortex so each follicle if we see it consists of a primary oocyte which is surrounded by a single layer of uh, squamous follicular cells here you can see these are squamous follicular cells and in the center this is the primary oocyte so if we see we see that primordial follicles at birth they are about 1 to 2 million in number so as uh, we progress or the as there is growth in pu during puberty almost 5 uh, uh, lakh primordial follicles are seen but as the age progresses and till menopause there these primordial follicles they get completely exhausted so the primary follicles or the here you can see these are the primary follicles they are formed from the primordial follicles when these primordial follicles they enlarge in size and become 50 to 80 micrometer in diameters so they form the primary follicle so now the lining epithelium from squamous it becomes a cuboidal epithelium and uh, they at this stage it is called as unilamellar primary follicles so here you can see the follicular lining epithelium that is the uh, uh, cuboidal epithelium uh, this is oocyte in the center so these follicular cells now they divide 
and uh, divide to form a stratified cuboidal layer of granulosa cells and now we call it as a multilamellar primary follicle. Now this oocyte uh, it is separated from the surrounding follicular cells by a glycoprotein layer which is derived from both and we call it as zona pellucida. So here you can see this is zona pellucida. Now the outermost layer of these follicular cells if you see it rests upon a membrane well defined membrane and we call it as a basement membrane and uh, this basement separate uh, membrane which separates it from the ovarian stroma now this this stroma it uh, now starts condensing and form the theca folliculi so here we can see now the primary follicle it is now forming the secondary follicle as the size it reaches the 125 micrometers so this is a full form full uh, full size and uh, we also call it as an enteral follicle as there is uh, irregular fluids, fluid filled spaces they coalesce together and form an antrum and this uh, antrum it is filled with the lycal folliculi and this uh, follicle it increases in size that is 2 mm and uh, mainly due to the formation of the antrum and the lycal folliculi. So if we see uh, the theca, that is theca folliculi, now it now it has differentiated into two layers, that is theca interna and the theca externa. So the theca interna, we call is an call it as an internal cellular layer, whereas the theca externa it is an outer fibrous layer. So these layers are thought to release or secrete the estrogen. So now the secondary follicle, now it develops and forms a mature graphene follicle. So that is uh, now the follicle, it has increased in size, fluid has accommodated, so now it has become larger in size. So if we see this antrum, it has divided these cells or the follicular cells into two types. That is the outer set of cells that uh, lines the cavity and it forms a membrane. Uh, granulosa and the inner cells that surround the ovum and attaches at one pole of the follicle which forms a cumulus euphoricus. So this is the cumulus euphoricus surrounding the ovum and uh, now the size of the follicle it is measuring about more than 10 mm in diameter and if we see on the ovary um, on gross that is uh, with naked eye we can see there is bulging of that area where the graphene follicle is present. So at this stage the primary oocyte completes its meiotic division and now this it has become an ovum. So here it is important to note that all primary oocytes enter into prophase 1 uh, meiotic division during fetal life but meiosis remain arrested at this stage till just before the ovulation. So now what is ovulation? Now at the mid cycle that is about uh, 14 to 28 days of the cycle under the influence of estrogen there is sudden increase in the amount of the lycal folliculi which causes a rupture of the mature follicle. Here you can see now this mature follicle it has ruptured and there is release of secondary oocyte along with one layer of loosely adherent granulosa cells and now we call it as corona radiator into the peritoneal cavity and this process is called as ovulation and from the peritoneal cavity this ovum is rapidly drawn into the uterine tubes. So if we see the other uh, follicle that is the atritic follicle, so many ovarian follicles start maturing each ovarian cycle but only one attain full maturity and undergoes the ovulation whereas other follicles they degenerate so we call it as the atresia of the follicles at various stages of maturation and uh, they become the atritic follicles. Here you can see this is the atritic follicle. So the follicle from which the ovum has been released and uh, now what happens? That follicle it collapses and uh, 
uh, its outer layer it gets enfolded on itself and get transformed into a temporary endocrine organ and we call it as a corpus luteum so the theca externa so here you can see this theca externa it forms a poorly defined capsule around the developing corpus luteum now it invades the granulosa cells along with the blood vessels from the periphery to occupy the remnants of the follicular cavity in the center now the cells of the theca interna and the granulosa cells they undergo hypertrophy and now they are filled with lipo lipochrome pigments to become luteal cells so these luteal cells they contain the lipid droplets uh, in abundant and uh, have lot of smooth endoplasmic reticulum and mitochondria so these are the characteristic features of the uh, steroid secreting cells or the steroid synthesizing cells so if we see the luteal cells we are having two types of luteal cells that is uh, the inner that is granulosa luteal cells so they are predominant and they are derived from the granulosa cells they contain large pale staining cells with vesicular nuclei and uh, they are found deep in the corpus luteum here you can see deep in the corpus luteum they synthesize and secrete the hormone progesterone whereas the outer theca luteal cells they are small they are less numerous and they are light slightly darkly stained than the luteal cells that is the granulosa luteal cells so they are along the periphery and uh, along the connective tissue strands that invade the structure and these cells they secrete the estrogen so here you can see the theca luteal cells and the theca granulosa cells so on a cut section of the ovary so this is how you are going to visualize it under microscope we can see the outer cortex and the inner medulla so in the outer cortex here you can see so many primordial cells and then these are the uh, follicles in different stages here you can see these are follicles of the different stages and this is the hilum and this is the medulla thank you for just listening to this slide please do uh, like comment share and if you want me to improve kindly inbox me